Okay, this is the 12 o'clock uh, Zoom meeting, uh, Math 1111 for this week. We'll start with the assignments for this week. Just one section this week, section 2.8. We will not have a quiz on this this week because we're doing test two. It will be your proctored test and it covers 2-1, 2-2, 2-4, 2-6, 7, 7, and 8. Let me just double check that that is correct. And two. Left off two, three, two, three, two, four, two, six, two, seven, and two, eight. So, yes, oops, I left off two, three. My apologies. All right, we'll have the test available on Friday and do Sunday, just like the quiz. We will give further instructions this week. I will also give out a practice test with key this week. Give out a practice test with key. This week, the practice problems from section 2.8, 7 to 23, 37, 39, and 49 to 69 odd. Web assign, section personal study plan, your section 2.8 practice quiz. Just four of them, one, three, five, and six only. And just email me the percent of those problems you get correct. All right. We'll start with section 2.8. We will just work some practice problems. Two point eight is about finding one, two. One functions and their inverses. Okay. This is basically about how to undo functions. Now you're probably used to square root and x squared. So probably everybody knows that the square root of x squared is equal to x and x squared, uh, well let's see, uh, what I meant was square root of x squared is also equal to x. And if you notice on your calculator, square root and x squared are off the same key, they're paired. And this is the entire way your calculator is organized. Functions that undo each other are paired on the same key. We're going to hit the cell and the log key in chapter four. You hit the sine, cosine, and tangent key, and notice this sine minus one, cosine minus one, tangent minus one. They undo your sine, cosine, and tangent. If you had trig in high school, you may have seen that. So your whole calculator is organized this way. 
Now, let me, uh, let me start with, I, I kind of, I try to teach this section backwards. Uh, how to undo a general function. There's three steps. Let's just, for an example, given y, well, I'll use f of x, 2x plus 1. Internet isn't working that great today. Okay. To undo. Follow these three steps. Step one, set y equals f of x. So that would give y equals 2x plus 1. Step two, switch x and y. In effect, you're switching your input and output. That gives x equals to y plus 1. And step 3, solve for y. So if I have x equals 2y plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, x minus 1 equals 2y. Divide by 2, and y equals x minus 1, divide by 2. This y equals f inverse of x. So, given f of x equals 2x plus 1, this f inverse of x is x minus 1 divided by 2. Now I can f inverse undoes f of x. You can kind of justify it. Notice in the original, I'm multiplying by two and adding one. Look how in the inverse, I'm subtracting one inverse to adding and I'm dividing by two, which is inverse to the multiply. To show this, you must show number one, it doesn't matter the order, that f inverse of f of x equals x. And number two, f of f in f inverse of x equals x. In plain English, you plug one into the other and watch. Everything cancel. They'll have you do this in the homework with random functions. All right, so for this f inverse of f of x would be f inverse. Uh, they use this minus one notation to read inverse. 
which is red F inverse. And I put in the two X plus one. And this is why we did those problems last section. I now plug that expression formula into F inverse, which means I get Y, uh, I get 2x plus 1 for that x minus 1 all divided by 2. So you can see the 1's cancel. I wind up with 2x divided by 2, which equals x. So in this direction, f inverse of f of x, in effect, cancel, leaving me the x, what's in the middle, what's the input. But it's not enough to do it in that order. It must also, to be true inverses, it must also work in the inverse, in the reverse order. To be true inverses, it must also work in the reverse order. F of F inverse of X. So that is F of my X minus one divided by two, putting in F inverse. And that means I plug that formula in for the F, which means I, uh, for the X, which means I double it and add one. That means I'm gonna take this, x minus 1 divided by 2. So I'm taking the x minus 1 divided by 2, doubling it, and adding 1. That means the 2s are going to cancel, leaving me x minus 1 add 1, which will equal x. OK, this shows. and F inverse are inverse. I'm now gonna come back to the beginning of the section. And they show you a test for inverse. the horizontal line test. Why is it horizontal? Why? I know you're dying to know. Horizontal. Okay, remember, vertical line test. or function. I'll use x squared. Remember, this is your input, output. A vertical line. must only intersect, or let's say intersect, only once anywhere. To be a function. Okay. To have an inverse, a function must be what is called one to one. And the key Step two, switch 
x and y to find inverse. The, the key to find inverse is step two. So what happens is, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do x squared. This is x squared. When you switch x and y, you're, in effect, you're switching your input and output. So in effect, this is your input, and this is your output. And so if, if your input's up here, you can only intersect once anywhere, but it's horizontal. And can you see x squared fails as no inverse. In other words, your vertical line test becomes a horizontal line test. Your vertical line test becomes a horizontal line test. Same criteria for inverse. Since the inputs now, since you switch the input and output and your inputs now up here and your outputs down here, you can only have one output for every input to have an inverse. And x squared has two, even though it is a function. It passes the vertical line test, no problem. It is a function. And the inputs down here, it has one output for any single input anywhere. But when you switch the x and y, switch the input and output to have an inverse to undo it. This is your input, and now you spectacularly fail. You have two outputs for any single input. X squared is not one-to-one. -one. Now, this is strange. Do one has no inverse. Now, this is strange. Because I could have swore, we just told you that square root and x squared undo each other and therefore are inverses. Oh no, what are we going to do? Okay, so the reason is the x squared on your calculator is not this x squared. So if we want to go back to version one, y equals x squared, its domain is minus infinity to infinity. It looks like this. Fails the horizontal line test has no inverse. I can let the camera catch up. Okay. Your calculator uses, we'll call it version two. It's called restricting the domain. You can see if you cut it here and don't let it curl around on itself, just use half, it uses y equals x squared with a domain zero to infinity. And now, if this is your input, this is your output, it passes the horizontal line test. as an inverse. You already know the inverse, but I'll go ahead and uh, find it, given the y equals x squared, already did step one. Okay, so put in a y. Step two, switch x and y. x equals y squared. 
And step three, solve for y. Square root of x equals y. I'll, I'll go ahead and write out all the steps. Square root of y squared. So y equals the square root of x. And this is equal to f inverse of x. Since it isn't that hard, I'll go ahead and write out the thing. So in other words, to check f inverse of f of x would be f inverse of, this is the original f of x, x squared, which would be the square root of x squared, which would be x. And punch the keys the other way, f of f inverse of x would be f of the square root of x, and that would be the square root of x squared, which would be x. My pen is stop on. So you're going to see these domain restrictions a lot, and they're restricting it so that you use a region where you pass the horizontal line test and have an inverse. Okay, let's see. Is there any else they make you do? A graph of an inverse function. Page 260, graph of an inverse function. Uh, why don't I just show the cue I gave you. We had originally 2x plus 1. And we showed f inverse was x minus 1 all divided by 2. I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, I guess it died. If I graph both. Two x plus one parentheses x minus one and divide by two graph uh, let's see window ah oh, yeah that's problem negative I use new ten oops. Okay, I get kind of an X. And you might not think that there's anything special about that X. Two X plus one is a Y intercept of one. Kind of crosses like this. And two X has a kind of a Y intercept of a half. And you might not think there's anything special about that, but it turns out if I'll put a third line on just X itself. All right, that is called the 45 degree line or the Y equals X line. And it turns out, this is the original F, this is F inverse, the graphs. of any f and its f inverse are symmetric about the y equals x line. So they intersect on the y equals x line. And if you kind of twist 45 degrees, you can see a symmetric picture. Now, I'll show you this with x squared and square root. Y equals x line, 
but let's do it from zero forward. X squared, square root X. Well, on the window, let's make it zero to 10, because remember you had to go forward, you had to go from zero to infinity. Graph. Okay, it's tough to see what's going on down here, but your cur X squared's curling around, square root's curling above, and you're gonna get your intersection point right on. Let's, uh, in fact, let's just try to show, let's run it from zero to two, see if we show it any better. You can't really see what's going on there, so window zero to two. Doesn't show it a whole lot. Why don't we make it zero to two on Y? Yeah, it doesn't show a whole lot. Let's make it zero to two. Okay, there's X squared. There's the square root. And your Y equals X line right up through the middle of them. So it's symmetric here. And they curl away at the same rates. Symmetric about the Y equals this is square root. They're symmetric about the y equals x line. All right, that's just a property of a function f and its inverse. Let's try a few examples. We're at almost 30 minutes, so let's try a few examples. And we'll just we'll start page 262. Number seven. I'll give you a graph. Looks like it's coming up, curling down just a little bit and going back up. X determine whether. F is one to one. Okay, to be one to one, it must pass the horizontal line test. You can see, no, it fails. Horizontal line right through here, fails. Horizontal line test, not one-to-one. -one. Where there is no inverse. It didn't really ask whether it was an inverse or not, but that's what it means. So 13 to 23, you must graph. For 23, you must graph. Then see if it passes the horizontal line test. Line test. Why don't we try 17? Problem 17, f of x, x squared minus 2x. I'll go back to a negative 10, 10, 1, negative 10, 10, 1 window. Uh, y equals uh, clear, 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 x squared minus 2x. And you can see us through the origin, does this, fails, horizontal line test, not 
One, two, one. All right. Questions about this? All right, I think I gave 37 and 39. Let's see, the assignment, 23, right, 37, 39. So we'll try 37. I gave a couple of these. There's the main actions in the last section, 49 to uh, 69. 37, f of x, x minus, uh, f of x, x minus 6, g of x, x plus 6, show f and g are inverses. So you must show, you can kind of suspect that they are. You see how one subtract has a subtract, one has an add, they're kind of inverse operations. Show one that f of g of x equals x, and number two that g of f of x must equal x. So it, it's like punching the keys in this order or punching the keys in that order. So f of g of x is f of x plus six, which is equal to plug x plus six into f x plus 6 minus 6, which sure enough equals x. So in that order, it works. But it's possible to come up with formulas that work in one order and don't work the other order. So they've got to work in both directions. So g of the x minus 6, f of x, g of x minus, plugging in x minus 6 for the f, by plugging x minus 6 into that x, that's x minus 6 add 6, and that's equal to x. So, so f and g are inverses. All right, well, the real action here is... this last section, 49 through 69. They give you general formulas, and they want you to find the inverse function, which means you need to follow all three steps. Some are harder than others. They've done similar one forty nine. Why don't we try one like fifty one? So page two sixty three, say fifty one. So the f of x five minus four x cubed. Find f inverse of x. You must follow the three steps. 1, y equals 5 minus 4x cubed. Step 2, x equals 5 minus 4y cubed. You switch x and y. That's the key step. That's what gives you the horizontal line test. Step 3. Solve for y. Well, on this, you got to do whatever you have to do to solve for y. Some have more steps than others. x minus 5 would equal a negative 4y cubed. x minus 5 equals negative 4y cubed. I'm going to divide by negative 4. Cancel the negative 4, so x minus 5 divided by negative 4 equals y cubed. Now take third root. Minus 5 divided by negative 4 equals third root of y cubed. In effect, these undo each other. Remember, 
not directly on a calculator. So you've, you've used that concept of undoing a lot. And that'll give you a y. Third root of x minus 5 divided by negative 4. This is equal to the f inverse of x. So answer. f inverse of x, third root of x minus 5 and dividing by negative 4. Once again, you kind of uh, see how you have a third power? You have a third root in the inverse. You're multiplying by negative four here, you're dividing by negative four. The five is positive up here like you're adding it, down here you're subtracting it. We won't uh, plug one into the other, hopefully you'll believe. Do each other. Uh, let's try 61. f of x, 4 minus x squared. Notice that they've given you x greater than or equal to 0. The purpose of this to restrict domain to have an inverse. We'll show you. What's the inversion one? Y is four minus X squared. Okay, so there is four minus X squared. I'm really doing a negative infinity to infinity domain, but you know, the calculator can't do that. So I'm most negative 10, 10. I'll ignore this just temporarily. Notice what happens. It's an upside down parabola up four, looks like. Upside down parabola, no inverse. Fails, goes on a long line test. So when they put this in, that's not the version they gave me. They gave me this version. This is x min. There's no x max. So I Go to my window and stick in x minus zero graph. And now you can see I've chopped off the left half. Off left half. And now I have a function that passes the horizontal line test that is one to one. So that's the entire purpose of this. So I'm going to follow my three steps. Y equals four minus X squared. Two X equals four minus Y squared. Step three. Uh, step three. Uh, yes, yeah, solve for Y. X minus four is a negative Y squared. X minus four divided by negative one equals negative Y squared divided by negative one. So this is Y squared. X minus four divided by negative one. Take square root. Undo your Y squared here. X minus four divided by negative one equals square root y squared. Switch around, so y equals big square root x minus four divided by negative one. Now, a lot of times they don't like negative ones under the root, so you might see this written as big square root of four minus x. So positive four minus x, and you can get rid of the negative one. Either one is fine. This is your f inverse of x. All right, we're at about 40 minutes. That's examples of all the sections of different problems. So remember on the test, it will be 2.1, and eight. And 
we will get out instructions as quick as I can this week. That's test two. Proctored. Instructions. Will be mailed out. This week. Otherwise, we will uh, see you at the next Zoom session. Hopefully, well, there's one tonight at nine o'clock, and then we'll see you just before uh, the test on Friday. Um, Zoom sessions on Thursday. So that will end uh, this session. Thank you. <laughs>